visions. Visions are usually described using three categories. Corporeal visions are empirical, involving sense experience, particularly vision and hearing. The eye sees a supernatural vision that is really present, and the experiencer can interact with what is seen and heard. For example, the vision of Bernadette Subarus of the Immaculate Conception at Lourdes, and the visions of Joan of Arc during the Hundred Years' Wars. Imaginative visions are seen by the eye of the mind, rather than by direct sight, usually in dreams, and are beyond the control of the experiencer. Pharaoh's dream in Genesis 41 and the dream of Joseph in Matthew 2 are both cases where the effects of the vision are dramatic. Intellectual visions have no image. Yet what is experienced is seen as it really is. For example, Teresa of Avila, who claimed to see Jesus as he really was, not as an image but as a presence. The light of an intellectual vision is through the illumination of the soul. Otto and the idea of the holy. Religious experiences are encounters with the holy, as in the core experiences of Moses as, and Isaiah. Encounters with the holy are numinous, which Otto claims is common to all religious experiences, regardless of religion or culture. The numinous is God or the holy other, and God is inherently different from anything and everything else. God is beyond the supernatural, God is beyond the natural world and beyond apprehension or comprehension. Numinous feelings are just not just more intense versions of our normal feelings, they are so generous, unique or in class of their own. They are a special faculty in our minds, a faculty that recognises the holy and responds to it. Numinous feelings are non-rational. They are mysterium tremendum et fascinans. A tremendous and fascinating mystery. Before this mystery, we as finite creatures feel our nothingness when faced with the utter transcendence of God. The tremendous power can chill and numb. It inspires feeling of awe, majesty and dread, fear and tra- terror, stupor, blank wonder, dumb astonishment, inadequacy, humility and creaturelessness. The mystery is fascinating and the experiencer is caught up in it so that it can evoke rapture and love. William James, Mystical Experiences. William James, the object of mystical experiences, is union with God. Therefore, James' account of mystical experiences is radically different from that of Rudolf Otto. For James, religious experiences are primary and organised religion is secondary. God exists factually but is probably finite and may even exist as a collection of godlike selves. Experience teaches us that the world draws its chief significance from a more spiritual universe, the realm of God. The true end of humanity is union with that higher realm. Prayer and or spiritual communication prayer slash spiritual communion with that higher realm has positive effects in this world, such as an energetic zest for life and assurance of safety, peace and loving affection. This kind of personal religious experience has its root and centre in mystical states of consciousness. There are four criteria that form a common core to mystical experiences. They are ineffable, noetic, transient, and passive. Moreover, they range from experiences with little religious significance, such as the effects of music or poetry or the experience of deja vu, to cosmic consciousness and union with the divine. The point of mystical religious experience is that God, slash the divine, meets each individual on the basis of their personal concerns, be they sick souls or healthy-minded. God's existence is the guarantee that there is an ideal order that will be permanently preserved. Walter Stace, non-sensuous and non-intellectual union with the divine. Stace defines mysticism as non-sensuous and non-intellectual union with the divine. Non-sensuous because the senses no longer work at this level, and non-intellectual because the normal conscious eye of the intellect is replaced by pure consciousness. A mystic is someone who has had a religious experience. Challenges to religious experience. Religious experiences are difficult to prove true. For example, they are mainly experienced by unsupported evidence of individuals. They are subjective and private. They are ineffable, so cannot be understood. They can be accounted for by super, by they can be accounted for by natural explanations. Some are contradictory. All normal experiences count against them. It is not difficult to defend religious beliefs against these challenges. The challenges to religious experiences from science. God's argument for wish fulfilment. Relig- scientific challenges include the fact that following conditions or actions can produce religious visions or feelings, temporal lobe epilepsy, 
artificial simulation of the temporal lobes through the god helmet or entheogens such as LSD and psilocybin. The scientific conclusion is that religious experiences are generated by the brain and not by God. Religious ex religious responses include religious experiences can only be experienced by brain states. How else would God convey them as opposed to talking about it or being sympathetic towards it? Mysticism has nothing to do with the occult and visions and voices are not mystical experiences. There are two types of mystical experience, extroverted and introverted. Extroverted experiences are kind of a halfway house to introverted experiences, since in the extroverted type, sense experience is still active and sees the non-sensuous unity that shines through normal objects. In the more important introverted experience, sense experience is totally suppressed and the conscious, I, ceases to exist, replaced by unitary consciousness, the one, the void, pure consciousness. To the experiencer, the brain of the experiencer simply processes what comes from God. Not only that, there is no reason why the mind should not reach out to God and generate religious experiences. According to William James, it makes no difference how religious experiences are generated. Experiences of God can come from altered states of consciousness brought about by temporal lobe epilepsy by artificial stimulation of the temporal lobes and by ethogens. Swinburne's principles of credulity and testimony. Two principles make part of Swinburne's argument that the existence of God is probable. Religious experiences can make the existence of God even more probable. The principle of credulity is that if it seems sub that subject X is present, then in the absence of special considerations, probably X is present. How things seem to be is good grounds for the belief of how things are. It cannot be shown that all claims about religious experiences are unreliable, or that they are untrue, or that God was not present, or that religious experiences can more reliably be explained in other ways, so religious experiences are probably true. The principle of testimony is that in the absence of special considerations, the experiences of others are probably as they report them. If reliable witnesses report religious experiences, we should therefore believe them. It is a a skeptic's job to it is a skeptic's job to show that religious experiences are false rather than the believer's job to show that they are true. Arguments against Swinburne. It's hard to see how we can go from people's claims about reliability of their sense experience to claim that mystical and visionary religious experiences are also reliable. Moreover, unlike sense experiences, religious experiences are the first person private, so we cannot see people's thoughts to confirm them. Even if everybody who has a religious experience believes that they are experiences of God, this would not prove that God really is involved. Arguments for Swinburne. Where those who have had religi religious experiences show a measurable difference in lifestyle, this is good evidence that the underlying experiences are true. Moreover, the conclusion is supported by the testimony of others who have had similar experiences or, and who also make lifestyle changes. The cumulative argument supports that argument from religious experience. The influence of religious experiences and their value for religious faith. The influence of religious experiences include the fact that religious experiences can be foundational as with St Paul, they are inspirational as with Joan of Arc, they are at the heart of the pilgrimage tradition as with Bernadette Sobris, and they are life-changing as with C.S. Lewis. These influences obviously have value for religious faith, as most importantly, religious experiences confirm faith. There is good reason to suppose that higher levels of consciousness do exist, and that religious experiences are what we experience when these higher levels are reached, whether we interpret them as God, as unitary consciousness, or as ultimate reality. Because of this, they can confirm faith of all types. For some, the only certain certainty we can ever have comes from faith, through a religious experience in which God is encountered personally.